Hey everyone, it's AP, and today I'm building BD-1 from Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Check it out. Last December I picked up EA and Respawn's Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order for the PlayStation, and wow, this was the Star Wars game I've been waiting for. It's an action adventure RPG where you play a Jedi and you get to use the force and you get to use your lightsaber and you get to take down stormtroopers and seven sisters and second sisters and third sisters and fourth cousins and second cousins. Um, <laughs> you get to take down everybody. The game takes place five years after the events of Revenge of the Sith, and you play Padawan in hiding, Cal Kestis, as he searches the galaxy for clues for the whereabouts of a holocron that contains the information about Force-sensitive children in the galaxy. And of course, it's a race against time and the Empire because they want their dirty hands on it as well. At the very beginning of the game, Cal befriends a droid called BD-1, who was owned at one time by Jedi Master Evo Cordona. BD-1 is your companion throughout the entire game, giving you information, hollow maps, even um, stims to regenerate your health. He's a great droid with a great personality, and I just fell in love with him. And so, of course, I wanted to make one. A big shout out goes to Michael Badley on Patreon, who took the time and had just the skills to not only 3D model BD-1 at a one-to-one -one scale, but also design him in a way that he is now a kit that can be put together and also fully automated. So Michael Badley put together the full automation instructions for BD-1. So huge shout out to him. Please check him out on Patreon, support the cause, give him your money, download these files, and build this droid yourself. And I'll tell you what, he also did a DO from Rise of Skywalker and a full-size 3D printable R2-D2. You gotta go check him out. I'll put a link below in the description. I've already printed out the parts, so let's head on down to the shop and start finishing these puppies. Finishing 3D prints is sometimes an exercise in futility. There are a few ways to go about doing this, uh, but it all depends on what you actually printed your material, uh, printed your pieces in in the first place. These were all printed in PLA, which is, is um, it's a durable plastic. It's a biodegradable. It's actually a corn-based plastic, I believe. So you can actually compost it. Um, if you have an industrial composting facility, you can compost this plastic, which is kind of cool. Um, but it's a, it's a hard it's a hard material to finish. Uh, sanding it can take a while. It's not as easy to sand as, say, ABS or PET. There are a few ways to go about doing this, though. We can, did you like how this mysteriously appeared on the desk next to me? We can do a couple things. We can cover this with a, um, a brush-on epoxy. What this does is it's a, it's a very thin, epoxy that you paint on and when it dries it it kind of fills in the uh, striations uh, left by the, the the layering of the 3d print uh, and it just makes it easier to sand you can actually just put on the xtc 3d and not do anything to it and it'll give it a nice smooth relatively smooth coat um, i know some people have done just you know, a couple coats and called it good. I have yet to not have to sand this. So I don't know, we can give that a try on, on one set of the legs. Uh, the other thing that we'll do uh, is just good old fashioned sanding and bondoing. So when it comes to sanding the 3D prints, there are a few tools you'll want when finishing the 3D prints if you're doing it the manual way. Um, first, you'll want a variety of different grades of sandpaper. I have everything from 120 up to 400. And I actually like to cut them out or actually rip them out into these little, little smaller um, pieces here because it's just more easy to manage than taking a big sheet of you know eight by 10 and folding it in half and all that stuff. So just having a bunch of these around. Start with 120. That is gonna knock everything down. That's going to be your more abrasive grit. Uh, and then work your grits up to you know 320 or 400, depending on how smooth you're going. Because BD-1 is a used droid, uh, as is most things in the Star Wars universe, everything is pretty much used and abused. I don't want him to be perfectly smooth, so I'll probably go up to 220 or 320 um, as I'm sanding through. 
For imperfections like deep gouges, um, yeah, as you can see on this, on this one here, we have, um, you know, there's, there's a gap right around here. So I can use some Bondo to fill that in, sand it down. And when I paint it, you won't even know that that was there. Uh, this Bondo, it's a glazing and spot putty. Uh, you just pick it up in the auto, uh, at any auto store um, or in the automotive aisle of your local department store, like a Walmart or a Target. Uh, they'll have this stuff. This is great, it dries fast. And then to apply that, I have this great set of, uh, these are, this is a wax carving kit. It looks more like a dentist's um, cleaning kit. You have everything in here from all these little picks and pins uh, to really smooth out and get the Bondo in to these grooves nicely. These tools are phenomenal. I got them super cheap from somewhere, uh, probably Amazon, most likely eBay. Uh, I use these all the time in my scale modeling work. I highly recommend getting a set of these. I think it was like 10 bucks or something like that. Uh, I'll find a link and put it into the description below. So those are the tools I'm using. We'll try this on something. Uh, so I guess the last thing we need to do is safety first. You do not want to be inhaling the dust particles from all this plastic. So wear a face mask. So this one here, there was a little layer shifting as this was printing. And you can probably see how as you're going up, as you're going up, it goes in a little bit. So what happened there was as it was printing, something happened and the extruder went off by like a fraction of a millimeter. And so there's this little indent here. Again, because everything in the Star Wars universe is used and abused, I'm okay with this. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. So, But if you were making this for money, if you were making it for a client, this would go in the trash or the recycle bin. So here we're going to use some of the Bondo to fill in these lines right here. Uh, it looks like some separation happened during the print. Uh, why I don't know, but that's okay. All this stuff easily fixable. So I'm grabbing my glazing and spot putty and one of my clay tools. I'm just going to get a little bit little bit out on there this stuff dries really fast so you probably have like a good yeah, five minute working time and then it's dry I mean I like to give it you know an hour but you can probably sand it within 20 minutes or so so as you just see there just kind of filling in the gap so there we go so I'll be able to sand that down nice and smooth uh, and get rid of those gaps. Actually, look at that one little gap. So all the pieces have been sanded. I am going to now just give them a nice rinse to get all of the, the dust off of them uh, because there is a lot of fine dust. I will say the sand job is not 100% perfect and there are imperfections. Now, I'm okay with that. Uh, my excuse for being okay with that is the fact that in the Star Wars universe, everything is used. That was kind of George Lucas's thing back when they made the original Star Wars back in the 70s. Um, he wanted the universe to look used. And so 
when creating this droid, I want it also to look used. I want dings in it. I want scratches. I want imperfections. Um, so yes, I am being lazy by not making this 100% smooth and getting rid of all the striations and the imperfections from the 3D print, but it works in this case. Now, if I was making you know something for I don't know what, for manufacturing purposes or uh, making something that is supposed to look new, then yes, I would spend many more minutes sanding these things to get them to be perfect. But I'm not gonna do it because I don't have to. Okay, so I'm going to wash these off, let them dry, and then we can put the primer coat. Actually, we can just paint them, okay? all of the leg pieces, I'm gonna move on to the base. Um, but instead of sanding the foot parts on the base, I'm going to use the XTC 3D uh, on this, just to see what type of result I get. As you can see here, there's lots of layers going up the legs and on the side here. And so, um, I wanna see if the XTC 3D will do a good job of getting rid of those. Uh, it's been hit or miss with me with XTC 3D, so I figured why not give it another try. Um, so the thing about this base is that the feet are actually baked into the base. And ideally this would be one color and then the feet will be the white, um, that BD1 is. So what I'm going to do, oh, but I like the texture of this base. It actually looks kind of cool with the layer lines. Uh, so I don't want to get any XTC 3D on this. So I'm going to tape it off. I'm going to then paint on or brush on some of the XTC 3D. I'll probably do two coats to be on the safe side. Um, I think that may have been my problem in the past as I've only used one coat, thinking that this is the end all be all of solutions for 3D printing finishing. Um, and uh, then give it a nice light sanding and see if that does the job. So let's see if it works. So the XTC 3D is now dry and um, you know, I don't think I'm gonna put a second coat on this. It, it came out actually pretty decent. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a light, a light sanding, maybe like 400 grit to just smooth out the imperfections and then uh, prime it and paint it. Yeah, that came out pretty nice. Now that my pieces are all dry, I'm going to put a coat of black primer on all of these parts here. I'm going to use Vallejo Black Surface Primer. This is great stuff, and I actually love the smell of it too. It's very strange. Um, I'm doing black instead of gray because when I put the white coat on top, the black is going to seep through a little bit, giving it a much more um, kind of weathered look that uh, is what I'm going for because again, everything is used in the Star Wars universe. So I don't want it to look new. I want it to look very used uh, and doing that black primer with a white overcoat is going to help me get that finish. And I, I, I use that strategy for most of my model building um, when it comes to the Star Wars ships. Uh, or even droids. So uh, I have my Iwata airbrush here loaded up and uh, I'm going to start with the big pieces and then we'll move on to the little ones. The great thing about using an airbrush there's a few great things. First of all you have way more control than you would using a rattle can. Uh, second and probably most importantly for my purposes I can use it indoors. Uh, my wife does not like it when I use rattle spray paint cans inside because it stinks up the house and because it's January or, uh, February in the Northeast, it's really cold outside so I wouldn't be able to paint anyway. So this is a great solution to that.
Now I have to paint the tiny pieces, the, uh, the little greeblies that go on to BD1 here, but they're super tiny. And what's gonna happen is if I put my air gun to this, it's gonna fly across the table. No. And get dirty and that's no fun. So there's a few ways that I can do this. I can, um, I can tape them down to a substrate, like a piece of you know styrofoam or something, uh, and then airbrush them. For the bigger pieces where I need to get around, what I'm going to do is actually hot glue them to a uh, to a scrap piece of uh, modeling tree. I'm just going to cut some of these out, hot glue this on top, and then I can hold it to paint all around. It'll just make my life a little bit easier. And here it is, all nice and painted. I put a clear coat on it. Um, this actually came out much better than I expected. So um, it's a muted white because I put that black um, primer on and then misted the white over it. So it gives it this nice faded, worn look that is just awesome. And then if you look even closer, you can see uh, hopefully the uh, patterns from the 3D printer um, because they didn't fill in completely during printing, the black primer that went in with the red overcoat gives it this nice like kind of scratchy look to it which I'm just I'm just really digging I'm really vibing that so um, cool so this is me finishing 3d parts for BD1 uh, this is just one way to finish 3d parts the heavy sanding <laughs> way to do it uh, there are better ways like we saw with the XTC 3d and actually in hindsight um, I'm not a big fan of the XTC 3D on this particular project only because it made the parts so smooth and so glossy um, that I just, it didn't give me that aged look that I was looking for. So I'm reprinting the base uh, and I'm just going to uh, sand and paint it the way I did these parts here. And yes, I did put this together or start assembling it. Uh, I just couldn't contain myself. I'm a building nerd. so. Please forgive me. But that does mean there's going to be a part two to this where I actually put this all together. So make sure you like the video and make sure you share the video, but most importantly, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you are aware of when part two is available. And I wanna give a big shout out to some of my current subscribers like funny man Carl Bartow from Staten Island, my pal from theater camp, Ken Briota, fellow George Stevens Academy Eagle, Sarah Haney Thurston, and my man, Mr. Mickey Flint, or actually Sir Mickey Flint, who is a phenomenal leather worker, by the way. And if you're in the market for a custom made, handmade leather bag or portfolio, check him out. Two gentlemen of fortune.com. He has some amazing stuff. He's an amazing craftsman and uh, I'm not getting paid for this promotion. I'm just vouching that he is a top notch craftsman. So check him out. Thanks again for watching. And if you made it this far, thank you. That's really awesome of you to watch the entire video. You get a thumbs up in my book. And until next time, stop planning and start making. Thanks everybody.